Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing a pretty exciting discovery coming from the vicinity of our neighbor, Jupiter. And more specifically, from the moons of Jupiter that we sometimes refer to as the Galilean moons. Io, Ganymede, Europa, and Callisto. Because as the scientists have recently discovered, it looks like all four moons actually have aurora extremely similar to what we have on planet Earth, and in some cases, even potentially brighter in certain colors making this a pretty exciting discovery, although maybe not a surprising discovery for some of the scientists that have been studying this for a very long time, but definitely exciting nevertheless. And so in this video I wanted to discuss some of the details of what exactly the scientists found here, and more specifically talk about the types of aurora detected on all four moons, and how they differ from the ones on planet Earth. But first I guess a quick reminder of what exactly this phenomenon is, in case you're not sure how this works. Now this is just an example from a space engine of a random planet with random aurora, but in this case, based on the colors you're observing, we can actually tell what's in the atmosphere, and even tell a little bit more about the planet's magnetosphere by just observing the shape on the surface. So for example, for planet Earth right here, all of this follows the magnetic lines created by the magnetosphere, which in turn is generated by the outer core. And so as various charged particles follow these magnetic lines, they end up following the lines into specific locations in the upper atmosphere. And as some of these particles then interact with the atmosphere, they end up ionizing some of the atoms in the atmosphere, which makes them glow in certain colors. Now most of the colors we observe on planet Earth, as seen right here in these images from the International Space Station, tend to be sort of green. As a matter of fact, this is the most common aurora you'll see on Earth, and this is the one that I've seen myself personally. And green in this case is created by the interaction between atomic oxygen and excited molecular nitrogen, which when colliding with oxygen makes it excited as well and makes it produce green light. But because the concentration of oxygen decreases as you go higher and higher, especially at approximately 100 kilometers in altitude, at some point the collisions become much more rare and it actually naturally starts to emit red light at 630 nanometers. You can sort of see it in this video as well. And so oxygen in this case is responsible for the production of both green and reddish colors. But during more intense solar storms, when the radiation is much stronger, it can even penetrate deeper into the atmosphere, and at this point starts affecting other molecules as well, and specifically molecular nitrogen, which becomes ionized, producing a lot of bluish colors. But sometimes it's also mixed with red, making it appear sort of purplish. And so by looking at the colors of the aurora, it becomes possible to even tell the strength of the emissions coming from the sun, or more importantly, what's inside the atmosphere. You can literally tell what's in the atmosphere of the planet by observing the exact colors emitted from various aurora. Which by the way has been done by observing various very powerful aurora coming from distant brown dwarfs. But I guess importantly, green usually means oxygen. Whereas by seeing more bluish light, it means that this particular object might contain more nitrogen. And other colors might suggest something else. And so by observing Jupiter and its moons from right here on planet Earth, and specifically using a very large telescope in Hawaii, the WM Keck Observatory, that was able to analyze the Galilean moons as they essentially pass through the shadow of Jupiter, like this, during the eclipse, which basically happens every time they orbit around Jupiter, and by seeing what happens once they come out of the shadow. Here the scientists whose papers you can find in the description discovered that all four moons possessed visible wavelength aurora that in theory could be visible to human eye if one day we were to visit the system. And in this case, unlike planet Earth where the aurora are created by the interaction with the solar wind or various emissions coming from the sun, the aurora around the moons of Jupiter are created through the interaction of a very very thin atmosphere that all of these moons possess, and an extremely strong magnetic field coming from the Jupiter itself. Although the main reason they actually looked at these moons during the eclipse, or when they were in Jupiter's shadow, is that they can actually see what's happening on the moons when they're in complete darkness, in order to avoid the competition from the bright sunlight. And so when the moons were completely dark, they were able to see the telltale signs of the emissions of very specific light, in this case green light and red light, and with exactly the same frequencies as what we would expect from a typical aurora. But I guess more intriguingly, the actual color combination was different from planet Earth. 
And so because the atmosphere on our planet is much thicker, for the most part we'll be seeing a lot of green light. But the atmosphere of the Jupiter's moons is very very thin, and that means that the red aurora appear approximately 15 times brighter. I guess maybe resembling something like this if you were to look at it from the surface. Possibly even brighter than that. But more intriguingly is of course the reason why we even have these aurora, and that's once again because of oxygen. For example, one of the more exciting moons of Jupiter, Europa, that will hopefully have some kind of an exploration mission in the next few years, seem to contain both red light, green light, but also infrared light, which can only be produced by oxygen as well. And specifically the molecular oxygen, like the one we use here on Earth to breathe. And this of course implies that the extremely thin atmosphere, or technically exosphere as it's known, that exists here, predominantly is made out of molecular oxygen. But the origin of this molecular oxygen is obviously different from planet Earth. It seems to be created by what's known as photolysis, the breaking down of water ice that's on the surface into hydrogen and oxygen gases. Something that happens as a result of the interaction with the sun itself. And this is something we believe happens on Europa, Ganymede and Callisto, and of course a lot of other moons and objects out there in the solar system. But Io, the volcanic moon, is a bit of an oddball in this case. Here it's probably coming from the sulfur dioxide, a result of very powerful volcanic eruptions on the most volcanically active moon in the solar system. And as sulfur dioxide interacts with the sun, it becomes sulfur monoxide and elemental oxygen. But because of the different composition and concentration of gases in the exospheres of these moons, the colors for all of them are slightly different. The actual proportion is still being investigated. On top of this, Io also has quite a lot of sodium, once again from various volcanic emissions. And because of various salts like sodium chloride, potassium chloride, and many other salts contained in the volcanic plumes, they actually break down as well, potentially making this the most colorful moon when it comes to aurora. For example, the current assumption, based on the observations, is that Io compared to other moons is predominantly yellow-orange when the aurora start glowing the most, with the green and blue light being a lot less visible. This is sort of similar to a typical street lamp, very similar in color and very similar to how it might look if you were to look at it in darkness. But these moons are also producing a lot of infrared glow, which is only possible because their exospheres are so much thinner than the Earth's atmosphere. But that's obviously something we cannot detect with our own eyes, but something that can be visible to the James Webb Space Telescope. However, for some reason, even though the scientists expected to find quite a lot of water vapor as well, mostly because three of these moons contain very large oceans, or so the scientists believe, in this case the water vapor was not detected in any of these observations. Although this doesn't mean that they don't contain water on the inside, it just means that the scientists made an assumption that water would be visible too. It wasn't though. And on top of this it was discovered that because of the tilt of the magnetosphere around Jupiter, which is approximately 11 degrees, the overall brightness of these aurora change as they orbit around Jupiter. In other words, sometimes they appear brighter and sometimes they appear much dimmer. And also interestingly, the Io's sodium aurora, which produces that yellow-orange glow, becomes extremely faint after entering Jupiter's shadow, but then takes a couple of hours to become just as bright as it used to be in the beginning. So there are definitely some really intriguing interactions and very intriguing properties that the scientists are still trying to figure out. But future observations with the James Webb Space Telescope will probably help us reveal even more detail about these unusual phenomena and possibly help us discover some other mysteries on exactly what happens in the exospheres of these moons and what's inside these moons in order to produce all of the observations we see on the surface. But more importantly, by learning how to observe aurora in really far away objects, so far away planets or extremely far away brown dwarfs, it then becomes possible to develop a very accurate system of learning about the atmospheres of extremely distant objects by just discovering what color the aurora is. I mean, to some extent it's already possible, but it can definitely be perfected. But at least for now, that's all I wanted to mention. A pretty exciting discovery from the Jupiter system and a discovery we're going to be talking more about once even more confirmations are made and once even more colors are observed from maybe other moons somewhere out there in the solar system. And if you'd like to learn more about Aurora on other planets, such as Mars, check out some of the previous videos in the description. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who has learned about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.